In January of 2024, LEGO released three new Ninjago mech sets. Kai's Elemental Fire Mech, Cole's Elemental Earth Mech, and Sora's Elemental Tech Mech. These are, in my opinion, one of the best lines of Ninjago mechs that we've ever gotten. They're a spiritual successor to the Evo mechs, using a lot of the same parts, but they're significantly bigger while still being a great value. There's also a really cool feature where you can rearrange and swap their parts to create entirely new combinations. I fell in love with these sets when I first got them, and I was very hopeful for more. And luckily, there was one more coming. On March 1st, 2024, LEGO came out with Lloyd's Elemental Power Mech. Which, while I don't like it as much as the others, I still think it's a great addition to the lineup. However, as of right now, this is the end of this line of mechs. We only have four mechs when there's nine members of the ninja team. There's the original six, Kai, Cole, Jay, Zane, Nia, and Lloyd, plus the new characters from Ninjago Dragons Rising, Aaron, Sora, and Wildfire. I am hoping that future waves of sets will introduce the mechs that were missing for these characters, but I can't say for sure, and I also don't want to wait that long. So, I decided to fill in those gaps myself. I decided to build combining mechs for Zane, Jay, Nia, Aaron, and Wildfire, so that way I would have an elemental power mech for every single ninja. Now, going into this, I did have very specific roles I wanted to stick to. For one, I wanted to keep the ability of the mechs to swap parts and combine, both with each other and with the official mechs. So, that meant that each of my mechs needed to have that new waist joint that the official mechs have, as well as arms that connect on ball joints. Next, these mechs in the show are made of chrono steel, and the ninja channeled their elemental powers through them. So I wanted to make sure each of the ninja had their elemental power represented in their mech, and it wasn't just colored to match them. So to do all this, I wasn't just going to be able to use parts from my own collection, I had to go out and buy a few extra sets. As I mentioned, the official mechs use an all new specialized piece for the waist, so I had to get 5 extra of this part to build my mechs. Additionally, the official mechs largely use the SCCBS building system, and this wave introduced a new part, there's a larger armor piece. While I didn't necessarily need this piece for my customs, I thought having a few extras would be useful for helping my mechs match, so I decided to order an extra copy of Cole's Elemental Earth Mech, an extra copy of Kai's Elemental Fire Mech, and three extra copies of Sora's Elemental Tech Mech. I chose to get so many of Sora's because she provided white parts for Zane's mech, dark blue for Jay and Aaron, but most importantly the new armor piece in gold, which could be used for any of my mechs since all of them do use gold, so I thought it would be more beneficial than having a bunch of black or red armor pieces. Still, Kai had red parts that would be useful for Wildfire and Nia, and Cole had trans orange and orange parts which could be used on Wildfire and Aaron, so I still wanted to get one extra of each of those. And that was my basic plan going in, I didn't have any hard rolls in mind aside from what I just talked about, I just wanted my mechs to match the official mechs, and I wanted to get creative with them. So now let's jump in and take a look at the end result. First, here's Jay's Elemental Lightning Mech, and this is one of the crazier ones that I did, but I'm honestly very happy with how it turned out. Blue was a very difficult color to work with because there's not a lot of SCCPS parts that actually use that color. The cockpit was likely introduced in Dark Blue and the Wolf Mech earlier this year, but the actual armor pieces, both the new one and the old one, none of them existed blue. So my options are basically to use black, white, or gold, so this is partially what the extra Sora mechs were for. Cause you'll see all of my mechs do use gold to some extent, but I definitely leaned a lot more heavily into the gold on Jay to make up for the lack of blue parts available. Still though, I think it worked out, I think the gold fits in well. It's not overbearing, but it's definitely there, and I feel like it fits this character. But the most difficult part to get was these joints. Now these are of course the SCCBS joints, and I used a total of six of them in this build, two on each of the legs, and one on each of the arms, and these were an absolute nightmare to get. Because we have had blue SCCBS joints in the past, they were used on Zane's Power Up Mech Evo and Jay's Thunder Dragon Evo, but those weren't LEGO Standard Blue, those were Azure, which is Nia's color, and I was already going to use those joints on Zane's Mech and Nia's Mech, which you'll see later in this video, but this year LEGO finally introduced this part in regular blue, so I knew I had to use that for Jay, just fit him too perfectly. However, these were not easy to acquire, you see they only come in one LEGO Super Mario set that's $45 and you only get two of them in that set. So in theory, to build this, I would have had to buy three of that set, which would have been $135. But wait, you guys are probably all saying, just go on BrickLink, buy them on BrickLink. The thing is, LEGO Super Mario isn't selling super well nowadays, and it doesn't seem like many people bought this set at full price, because when I started working on this video back in late January, early February, there was not a single BrickLink seller that had these parts. So I put out a tweet asking if anybody had them would be willing to spare them, and I got exactly one response. Duckbrick, so you guys may know, actually reached out to me and told me that he had this set, and he was willing to give up the two parts, so thanks to his generosity, I was able to get two of the six that I needed. In that time, too, exactly one BrickLink seller put the parts up, so I was able to buy those as well, and then I did end up buying one copy of that LEGO Super Mario set. That was a very expensive investment for only two parts, so I want to give a shout out to this video sponsor, Aura, for helping me afford a lot of the stuff that I bought for this video. I try to keep my personal life and personal information relatively private, I don't share those things really anywhere. However, when I looked up my name, I was shocked to see how much came up. My parents' names, the schools I've gone to, and a lot more. What's even scarier though is when I looked up my parents' email addresses. With just a single search, I could see their full names, every address they've ever had, their phone numbers, and so much more, right there for anyone to see. 
This is because data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your name, email, home address, health records, so much of it is just out there for sale. And that's where today's sponsor, Aura, comes in to help. Aura can help find which data brokers are selling your information and automatically reaches out to them to get them to stop. When I signed up for Aura, I learned that there were 17 different companies trying to sell my information. And I'm only 22 years old, but there was already that many. Thanks to Aura, they are able to opt me out of having my data sold by these companies, which helps reduce the amount of spam that I get, but also protects me in case any hackers try to use this information to access my personal accounts. But that's not even all that Aura does. They also give you an antivirus, a VPN, password manager, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more, all in one affordable package. Aura is always on and always working to keep me and my information safe, so I can focus on other things without worry. You can sign up for Aura today with my link, aura.com slash bricksbymind, also linked in the description, and get a two-week free trial and start keeping your information safe today. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video. Seriously, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about, and I couldn't be happier to be working with them. Coming back and actually looking at the JMAC though, there's another very interesting part that I used, and that's the smaller Marvel slash Nexo Knights cockpit piece. Now I used a total of six of it in this build, I have two on the ankles, as well as two on each arm, and that's because I had so many extras of this part. If you missed it earlier this year, I put out a video where I army built the Jay's Mech Battle Pack, as well as customized the extra mechs to match the colors of the other ninja, but that left me with seven extra copies of this piece that I just wasn't using. So I tried it out on the build, and I have to say, I love how the geometry looks. It gives this mech a really unique shape. Looking at this with a weapon detached, my idea was sort of like Mega Man type blasters, and that was honestly one of my main inspirations in the entire design of this build. It was half Mega Man and half Reggie Alecki from Pokemon, but I felt like the cockpit really encase the hands well, and just create a very unique shape for LEGO. They're also quite sturdy too, like they're not really falling off or anything, so I was just imagining them as like big cannons where Jake could charge up his elemental power and then launch it out. And that's what his first weapon is, just these two elemental lightning blasts. Which if you hold his fingers up like this, you can imagine is actually shooting out of his wrist, or you can see it as a more physical weapon by wrapping those fingers around, and then it's maybe just some sort of staff or melee weapon that's being charged with lightning energy. Anyway, moving on to the parts of the build I haven't really touched on yet, the feet I don't have a ton to say about. I kind of wanted it to look like it has little wings coming off the back, because my idea was that this would be like a very fast mech, lightning speeds perhaps, but it is one of my more simple feet designs. You'll also see a bit of bright yellow back here, I use that in a few places on the build, I don't use it a ton. My first version of this mech had quite a bit more bright yellow, but I toned it down because I felt like the blue and gold was enough, bright yellow was just contradicting with the gold quite a bit. Then the legs themselves I did try to make quite thin. Again, I like the geometry of the cockpit at the bottom, but the upper part of the legs I wanted to be more thinned out, because my idea with this mech is I wanted all the bulk to be at the top. Because that's something that was very important to me with this build is I wanted every mech shape to be somewhat unique. Of course, some are going to be similar to each other, but if you look at the official mechs, like Sora's is super sleek and thin, while Cole's is short and bulky and Kai's is tall and bulky, so I wanted Jay's mech to have a lot in the upper body and not as much in the lower body. And I think this worked out well, I incorporated all the colors here, it feels smooth, it feels sleek, but it's not like overly complex either. Legs of course connect on a ball joints just like all the other mechs, and there is of course a waist pivot here just like all the other ones have. On top of the cockpit, I used this Dragon Jaw piece, which I was debating whether or not to include this, because I mean, like, the mech looks fine without it, but I don't know, I thought it looked cool and made the mech more unique, and, like, the official Lloyd mech from this line does have a helmet, so I didn't think this was too out of place. My favorite thing about it, though, is the jaw can actually close up to fully enclose Jay in there, so that way it feels like it's a lightning dragon mech, and you can't even be for sure that Jay's piloting it. As I said, though, I wanted to give off the impression that, like, all this lightning energy is being charged at the top, so that's what the dragon head does, it has all this trans yellow coming out the back, and that continues into the shoulder where I have these lightning effects coming out. This is very similar to the technique that's done on the official Kai mech, however the lightning pieces are pointing a slightly different direction just to change things up a bit. And then the rest we already talked about. But yeah, the idea was these are giant cannons on the end that could shoot that elemental energy out. On the other side, the arm's exactly identical, though it's holding this double-sided spear instead. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the weapons of this video I didn't spend a ton of time on. Some of them are better than others, and this is certainly one of my weaker ones. But my focus with this was the builds, not the weapons. And honestly, I didn't want to give Jay a weapon at all. I wanted him just to shoot the lightning out of his hand. But because all the official mechs have interchangeable weapons, I still wanted to give Jay an interchangeable one. So that's the point of the spear. There is one mech later in this video who doesn't have a weapon, but that's for a very specific purpose, which you will see. So yeah, I think the spear fits in fine, but it's certainly the weakest part of this build. And there we go, that's everything for my custom Jay's Elemental Lightning mech. This isn't my favorite in this video, but it is one I'm fairly happy with. He was definitely one of the biggest building challenges for sure, just because of the lack of blue parts in this building system, but I feel like I made it work, and my favorite part definitely is all those cockpit pieces that I used. I just feel like they ended up looking fantastic. Next, we come to one of my personal favorites in this video, Zane's Elemental Ice Mech. Now, Zane is my favorite ninja, so this is definitely the mech I was most excited to make, but I have to say, I'm incredibly happy with the end result. One thing that was really important to me with this build is that it had, like, very sharp parts of it. You may have noticed with Jay's, Jay's was more mechanical, more rounded. 
it did feel very robotic. Zane's though, I wanted Zane's to look like it was actually made out of ice to some extent, so I used a lot of very pointy pieces in this build. For example, like the tips of the toes are pointed. I've got these Nexonite shield pieces all over the build, and the cockpit pieces on the knees are a lot sharper than like the newer large SCCBS armor pieces that some of the other mechs use. That is definitely one of my favorite parts of this build, using those cockpit pieces as knee guards, because the newer bigger armor piece is only in red, black, and gold right now, and I could have used gold for Zane, but Zane was one of the ones that I didn't want to use a ton of gold for, so I tried out the cockpit because I had a total of three from the Sora mechs that I ordered, and I was super impressed with how they actually look on the build. I also have like a little bit of ice coming out the bottom there, just to help it all flow a little more nicely, and then I have the smaller traditional armor pieces at the top. Waste of course does have articulation, all the mechs are gonna have that, but you can see the cockpit area, I use a lot of these translate blue pieces. That's of course to represent Zane's element, because unlike the official Kai mech or my custom J mech, I wasn't gonna have like huge ice shards shooting out of this. It would've worked fine, because that is what a lot of the other mechs do, but no, I wanted this to be more of its own identity, and I just didn't feel like that fit Zane. So I used a bunch of this trans blue to show that like, hey, a good bit of this mech is made of actual ice, while also including things like these spikes on the side, which look like giant icicles. And maybe it makes this feel less like an elemental mech compared to some of the others, but I don't know, I feel like this end design was very sleek. I'm quite happy with it. These pieces at the top, by the way, I thought looked like fallen snow, and I thought that would be a cool way to top off the cockpit area. And you can see the trans blues even inside Zane's seating area, and he plops it there perfectly. Arms, though, are nothing too complex to get those icicles in the main focus. I used the smaller SCCBS armor piece here, and there's also a clip around the back to hold one of Zane's swords, because all of the official mechs have that. I'll admit, Zane's is the first one I built, and I kind of forgot to do that on the other mechs, so you're not going to see that on any of the others, but I'm sure it wouldn't be too difficult to add that if I wanted to. And then at the wrist, I tried to make it look like there was a bit of the ice coalescing. We got the three mech fingers right here, and then this giant ice sword as his weapon. Originally, I wasn't going to include this, I only had the other weapon on this build, but I came across this piece of my collection, it's from Zane's Ice Dragon Creature last year, and it was just too perfect to give it this mech that I couldn't not. And there is two hands, so I could give it two weapons, the official Sora mech has two weapons, so I thought why not, one side could have the sword, and the other side could have these spinning ice blades. Now these ice blades I have a ton of from Zane's Power Up mech that I've used in many of my building challenge videos, and of course this isn't a piece that I get to use that often, so I built up a supply of like four or five of them extra. And I was debating whether or not to include these, because the official Sora mech already uses these blade pieces, that's a transparent pink, this is translate blue, but still. However, I decided to make it different by making it two blades instead of just one, so that way it somewhat represents the shuriken's of ice, which was Zane's original weapon, and the colors just look cool. Zane's smaller evo mech did have one, so I thought, why not give the bigger version too? So of all the mechs in this video, this one is one of my favorites. It's between first and second, there's one more later on who's not my favorite character, but might be my favorite build I did, but I have to say I'm very happy with this one. Not the most complex, definitely one of my simpler ones, but I do think it looks quite good, and I think it fits in really well with the official mechs. Next, we come to Nia's mech, which is probably my least favorite that I did for this video, and her color scheme is just really tough to work with. Azure is a very interesting color because it's not the most common, there is quite a few pieces in that color, but not nearly as many as some of the other colors I used in this video, so especially only pulling from my own collection, it was quite tough to work with. Additionally, Nia's color scheme is just weird. She uses gunmetal gray, she uses azure, she uses dark red, and all of these mechs use gold, so I had to use gold somewhere, so this is the result that I was happiest with. In terms of like silhouette, like what part of this mech I wanted to be most prominently featured, it was actually the legs. And that's for a few reasons, I kind of wanted it to be like the inverse of the J-mech, right? My J-mech was very top heavy, this one's very bottom heavy. But then of course, Nia's also the master of water, and my original idea for this mech was it was some sort of swimming mech. That wasn't necessarily captured as much in the final version, but I wanted to make it look like this mech would probably be the best swimmer because it does have like bigger legs. And you can see that somewhat in these triangular pieces that come off on the sides. These are meant to look like little fins, so that way the mech would move better in the water. The other thing with this mech is I wanted it to look very rounded, and you can see that pretty obviously on the feet. Nia is of course the master of water, so I kind of wanted to make everything look like it's waves cascading. So it's not geometric like Jay's or sharp like Zane's, it's more smooth and rounded in most places, aside from those fins that we just looked at. On the knees, I used the SCCBS armor pieces in gold. I thought it was good to break up the red section from the azure section, and also tie in the gold that you see on the cockpit and on the fingertips. And honestly, I think it fits in pretty well, a lot better than I would have hoped. But then at the waist, I used red, and that's because red is a color that Nia uses sometimes. It's used on her belt on quite a few suits, especially modern suits, and of course when she wears Samurai Axe, her color was red. Now, she more often uses dark red than normal red, however, there's a lot more normal red parts than there is dark red parts, so I used these pieces here, and it kind of reminds me of the Samurai X mech from Crystallized. Maybe the red's too prominent, but I don't know, I feel like it fits Nia well enough. It's not the worst thing in the world. And you also notice I have like this little skirt design right here. That's for two reasons. For one, it's meant to match Sora's mech a little bit. The official Sora mech does a very similar thing. And in the show, it seems like Nia's gonna be Sora's specific mentor. And also, Nia's original Samurai X mech did a very similar thing where it had like little flaps at the 
waist, so I thought it would be neat to bring them over here, and again it adds to the overall bulk of the legs and everything. Now I will say this does restrict motion a lot more than some of the other mechs. It's not bad, especially like if you put it on a shelf you could definitely get poses out of this, but I don't think this could be released as an official set in this state, just because those skirt pieces create too much friction. Then coming up to the waist, of course, there is movement there, like I said, and this is where we see the Gunmetal Grey come in. Now I would have liked to use a lot more Gunmetal Grey in this build, however, there just isn't a ton of Gunmetal Grey parts. It's not a color that LEGO uses a bunch, and it's a color that I have even less of in my collection, so you may have seen on the legs, I just have Gunmetal Grey ingots thrown all over the place. And I think that works to mixed effect. They weren't originally there. In fact, in my original version of this build, the cockpit was the only Gunmetal Grey piece, but I tried to incorporate them in a lot more places, and I think some of them worked, others less so, but I'm glad I could at least incorporate that color somewhat. I did still include the red up here. Again, my original version of this, I only had red on the waist, but I thought it was good to tie it into other places, and it also just gave me more parts to use. Red's definitely most prominent in the waist, but it's also used in the cockpit area and the arms. And you can see I try to stick with that like very flowy aesthetic up here. And then there's a bit of translate blue on the inside. I try not to use it as much on the outside because I didn't want it to look like Zane's. And then you may notice the arms in this mech are also out one stud further. That matches the official Cole mech, though it's a little more covered up than the Cole mech. And again, that's just to create a slightly different shape. I thought the arms fit in better like that. Coming to the arms themselves, I don't love these, especially on the underside. I think the underside's really ugly. But of course, this is a Nia's Elemental Water mech, so I wanted to have some water coming out. And these pieces are fantastic. I think they fit in really great. Then on the wrist, this is where we have our other Gunmetal Grey. Originally, this was just one of the red SCCBS armor pieces, like the older, smaller ones. But I swapped it out for some Gunmetal Grey parts. This, like, octagon piece is one of the few parts I had in my collection like available to me, but I looked at it and I'm like, you know what, that somewhat looks like netting, so maybe it fits into the whole swimming mech underwater vibes. I don't know, you guys have to let me know what you think, but I think it works alright. Then Nia, I did only give one weapon to, so you can see there is just a technical right here where you can attach a different weapon if you want, but on the other side I gave her a giant trident, which fits the whole underwater theme again. I probably could have made the hilt look better, but oh well, I think it's fine. It fits her well enough. The main focus of the mech is the mech. As I said, the weapons were very much an afterthought, but I think it fits her. And so all around, I do still like this one, it's just the one I'm the least happy with. There's a lot of things I wish I could change, and a lot of that's due to color limitations, but even still, probably if I had more parts and more time at my disposal, I probably could have done a little bit better with this. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like this one? Do you not like this one? And what would you change about it? I'm happy with the color scheme. I think the red and the azure looks great. I'm happy with all like the flowy aspects I included. I think that turned out really well. It's just the shaping of a few things that feel a little bit off. And now we come to the other mech that's in the running for my favorite of this video, my custom Aaron mech. I actually don't know what to call this one because it's not Aaron's elemental mech, it's just Aaron's mech because he doesn't have an elemental power. But I surprised myself with this one, I'm honestly super happy with how it turned out. Before we look up closer at that though, I just want to ask you guys to please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I spend a lot of time working on the builds for bigger videos like this, and if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far in this video and you want to see more, by liking this video and subscribing to the channel you help support me a ton, and also help put my videos in your feed as soon as they're posted, which enables me to make more videos just like this one. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure to leave a like in this video and subscribe if you're new. But now, with all that being said, let's get back to the review. So yeah, of course, Aaron does not have an elemental power, so I was even debating not including this mech in this video at all and just not building it. Because how do you make an elemental power mech for someone who doesn't have an elemental power? But I didn't feel like it would be fair to leave him out, so I'm like, alright, how do I do this one? Well, for one, Aaron does have a power. It's not an elemental power, but he has a unique mastery over spinjitsu, so I definitely want to incorporate that into the build somehow. So of course I gave him a spinning blade as a weapon, which yes, Zane and Sora also have, but I think it creates some good parity between him and Sora, because I would imagine Sora made this mech for him, and maybe she would want their two mechs to match in some way. But then my absolute favorite part of this build is the spinner crowns at the top. These fit in great on top of the new larger armor piece, and I think they look so cool and just fit Aaron perfectly. Absolutely my favorite detail. But then other things with like the design aesthetic of this build, my idea with this one is I wanted it to seem mechanical. Because unlike Zane and Jay and Nia that we just looked at, there is no elemental power being represented here. So I didn't want it to look like energy was flowing through this mech, because it's a purely mechanical machine with no outside power source. So my idea was kind of to make it look armored, but not bulky if that makes any sense. Like, the legs have tons of detail on them and they cover every surface, but they're not like super big, they're quite lanky. And then the cockpit area is quite big, and the shoulder pads are a really nice touch, but then once again the arms are really thin, not nearly as bulky as some of the other mechs. And I do genuinely think this turned out great. The other thing I was worried about with this mech is the color scheme, because Aaron's color scheme is weird. My original plan was to go for mostly bright orange and gold, because that's the colors of his mech pilot suit, even though it's not technically a full mech pilot suit. That's the color he uses on his hood, so that's the color I wanted to make the mech. 
However, those two colors are very similar to each other. Bright orange and gold are not too far off, just one's metallic. So I knew just doing those two, this would be an eyesore to look at. So I wanted to incorporate a darker color as well, and my original plan was dark green. Because Aaron does have green on his belt, and like his 4 plus mech from this year does use dark green. However, the more I thought about it, I decided to go with a dark blue instead. Because Aaron's off-road boogie car from March of this year uses that dark blue color, and in that set, I thought the dark blue and the bright orange looked fantastic together. And plus, he uses that color for his jeans in his casual outfit, so it is the color that's associated with him. So you can see I tried to kind of bring that over here. The dark blue is almost entirely on the legs. There's a little bit that comes up to the torso, so it helps keep the entire mech cohesive. But no, I sucked dark blue in the bottom and gold on the top, and the two don't really overlap all too much and I think it just makes for a really great look overall. The feet on this mech are quite small and rounded, I can't say there was a specific inspiration there, I just thought it looked good. I've got a bright orange SCCBS armor piece like hidden in here, it's pretty well covered up, and I kinda love it, it makes it look like there's alternating stripes of orange and dark blue. At the waist, of course, we can rotate, and I went largely gold for the cockpit area, you can see there's Aaron sitting in there, and then of course the arms, which I talked about. The spinners can actually spin, I was debating adding that, but that would constantly have them falling out of place, so I thought they looked best like this, and then I've got the dark blue in the center so that they really stand out. But then we just have a gold SCCBS armor pieces here, and then two weapons. One's the spinning blade, which we talked about before, the other's just a generic golden sword. And again, the entire idea is this is an entirely mechanical mech, there is no elemental power in here. So I wanted to give Eren, like, good ninja weapons, but basic ninja weapons. And I think I succeeded at that. So yeah, I'm between Zane's and this one is my favorite of the ones I built. I think I might actually lean towards this one, but that's hard for me to say, because Zane is my favorite ninja. But man, I'm just so happy with how this guy turned out, it looks so cool. I'm really happy I did decide to include Eren and that I got to build this for him. I think it ended up being a great build. And finally, we come to my last custom mech, Wildfire's Elemental Heat Mech, and this is definitely the silliest of the ones in my video. Throughout this entire thing, I've been going for different aesthetics for my different mechs. Jay's was very geometric, Zane's was very sharp, Nia's was very smooth and wavy, Aaron's was meant to look very mechanical, but for Wildfire's, I wanted to make it organic. Now that is organic in quotes, because of course I don't want to make it entirely organic, I did want it to still look like a mechanical mech, but because Wildfire comes with the wildness and she doesn't have any technology or anything where she comes from, I wanted the mech to feel very well wild. I made a smaller mech for her earlier this year in the Evo style, and I did a similar thing, but this bigger scale allowed me to go even crazier with it, and I am so happy with the end result. My initial plan going in was that I wanted to make another bulky mech like Cole's, because every other mech I'd done up until this point had the longer legs like Kai's, Lloyd's, and Sora's have, so I wanted to use the basic Cole design for Wildfire's legs, just so that Cole wouldn't be the only one that has that style. However, instead of just being a bulky mech similar to Cole's, it evolved into this, and I absolutely adore it. The feet are meant to look very draconic with the two toes at the front. I did incorporate a little bit of gold here just to tie that in because it's not really used anywhere else in the build besides the cockpit and the claws. So that way it's throughout the entire build but it's used very sparsely and I think that worked out. The legs as I mentioned are very similar to the Cole mech. There is a slightly different shape in the armor. I used the smaller SCCBS armor piece in dark red here. But yeah, it's meant to look somewhat organic like an actual creature would have, though with the very mechanical armor pieces on the knees just like Cole's mech has, though these are of course in red instead. As with all the others, yes there is waist articulation, and then the cockpit is of course red. Of all the colors available for that part, that was the best. Dark red would be cool if that existed but it just doesn't. But of course you can open that up and wildfire fits inside. We are back to elemental power max, so I've got all this trans orange right here to show our power channeling out. And I also use a bit of sand green here that's only on the cockpit of this build, but it is one of the main colors that she uses. If we look at the minifigure, she also uses normal orange as well as dark tan, and I considered using those colors more prominently in this build, but I didn't want to overdo it with the colors. Plus, Cole does already use orange, and Dark Tan's just not as interesting as Sand Green, so I decided that Sand Green would be the other color from her color scheme that she brings over, and I think that fits it pretty well. Her cockpit also just seems a lot more open than some of the others, which wasn't intentional, but honestly, I think that's perfect for her. But then we come to the arms, which are the main focus of this build. So first, I have these giant fire pieces shooting out. These are the purple fire pieces that came in the 4 Plus set with Wildfire this year, and in my mind, that's just to show this is the element of heat, not fire. But then you can see I made the actual arms quite rounded, and they're not rounded like the Neomex rounded, they're rounded almost to be somewhat muscular, to look like the arm of an actual dragon. We still use the SCCBS armor pieces in here, but they're a lot more covered up, and then we come to the hand at the very end, which is different from all the other mechs. Instead of having the little tiny mech fingers, we have three giant claws right here, and those are meant to be Wildfire's main weapons. I considered giving her like a full brick-built weapon, and she does still have the technical in the hand where you can give her one if you want to, but personally, I just didn't feel like it fit her character. She has these giant claws in her mech to slash, or she could shoot out her elemental power, but I didn't think she needed a weapon. So the spot 
slots there if I ever want to add one, but it's not in there by default. And then these arms are actually the longest of any of the mech arms, they're a little bit longer than the others that I've shown you in this video, which is a little funny because she also has the shortest legs, but the idea with that is I wanted the mech to be able to go on all fours if you wanted it to. Definitely a very silly idea, but I feel like it fits Wildfire's character perfectly. I know this is a very silly design all around, but I'm super happy with it. Not my favorite in this video, but I think it's unique and it fits this character perfectly, and I'm glad I got to play with this mech formula a little bit while still allowing this mech to mix and match and combine with the others. I wanted to show you all nine mechs lined up so you could see them all as a collection, but unfortunately there's just so many of them and they're so big they don't all fit in my light box at the same time. So here's the original six ninja all lined up, both my custom mechs and the official ones. Of course, Cole, Kai, and Lloyd are official here, the rest are custom. And then here's the mechs for the three new ninja from Ninjago Dragons Rising. Of course, the Sora mech in the center is the only official one here. And of course, I can't show you every combination in this video because there would literally be thousands, but here's a quick example to show you that yes, you can mix and match my custom mechs with the official ones and with each other. We got Aaron with Cole arm, Nia arm, and Lloyd legs, Zane with Aaron arm, Kai arm, and Nia legs, and Cole with Wildfire arm, J arm, and Sora legs. The possibilities are near endless with nine mechs. And this play feature is absolutely my favorite part of these mechs, it was really important that I still had that in my custom ones, so I'm really glad this is still an option I have. And there you go, there is all of my custom Ninjago Dragons Rising Elemental Power Max. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of these? Which one's your favorite, and which one's your least favorite, and how do you think I did overall? Personally, my favorite is definitely Zane or Aaron, really between those two. And least favorite is probably Nia? I don't know, sometimes it grows on me, other times it doesn't. But overall, I'm just really glad I was able to make customs to complete this collection. Also, let me know in the comments what you want my next building challenge video to be. I do have a few ideas, but I'm also open to ideas. This one was very highly suggested, so if there's one that a lot of people want to see, let me know in the comments, and in a month or two, you may see it on the channel. But as for this one, I think that's about all I have to say. Thank you again to Aura for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!